Sounds of uh, Chris Martin, uh, Roman uh, Vigo with a uh, glow. It's 15 minutes uh, gone after two, after 4 p.m. Uh, Central African time, and I'm joined by Angela James. Angela, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Wildfire, and good afternoon to all of the listeners. Wonderful to be with you guys again. All uh, right, now it's always a pleasure being back on air with you, Angela, because uh, we Aww. get to um, uh, enlighten, get to interrogate, and share. Uh, information about how best we can be a better version of ourselves and how best we can change uh, this world for better with the small little actions that uh, each and every one of us uh, do take on a daily basis. And uh, got to commend you for that and uh, big up yourself. Thank you. And I think I really like what you said about us becoming better better versions of ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that um, our guest this afternoon yeah. um, is going to shed some light on that. Um, Anita, um, this is Anita, if I can ask you, can I see, or Ottoman, um, is going yes. to bring you to us a whole lot of interesting information around linking to our theme of the week of hashtag choose to earn. Mm -hmm. So we've done our purpose, we've done our learning, we've defined how we're going to be serving our world, and now we're going to convert that into earning. Mm -hmm. um, we've explored through the week as well the different alternatives of how people can start to bring in revenue and resources into their lives through yes. things like SM, being a small business, an employee, um, whether it's an NPO, whether it's tomorrow we're going to be talking a bit about franchising, um, all of those elements. So what do we do now, Monica, when we get money in? Um, and this is really where your wheelhouse comes in. And it was something that Tanashi was also actually hoping that we would deal with. And that is, how do we have a wealth? An abundance mindset, a wealth mindset, and what do we do with our money when money can, and other resources, so whether it's time, whether it's um, trade exchanges, whether it's any form of resource or energy exchange, what do we do with that? So that's really your wheelhouse, and thanks for joining us this afternoon. Thank you so much for inviting me to, to join you this afternoon. Yes, so even more important than earning is the topic of spending and how you actually spend that earnings. So as a money coach, I work with a variety of people and the common, um, the common theme um, with all of them is that as their income increases, so does their lifestyle. <coughs> so it doesn't matter whether, you know, it's someone with 20,000 rand or 100,000 rand, if you keep spending more than you're earning, you are no better off even if you have a higher salary. So I always say it, um, if you can learn how to work with what you're earning right now, only then will you know how to responsibly spend, you know, um, the money, you know, the, any extra money that comes in or any increase of income that may happen down the line. So, so we, the you know, not always... The answer not always is, you know, the answer not always is necessarily I need to earn more. Um, sometimes it, it is, can I spend wiser? And then as more earnings come in, I, I, I utilize that um, more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the thing, and I think that we're talking to, because we have such a variety of different listeners, 
from business people to yes. um, people who are in the corporate space. But we also have quite a lot of young listeners. Um, some of the you know young people who are just starting out and who may be in their first job. Um, even youngsters who are maybe only living off a SASA pension. Um, so what I'm hearing you saying is not about the amount of money, it's about what we do with it um, as it comes in. So what are the kinds of rules of thumb around do's and don'ts that people should be doing? Okay, yes. So I am actually passionate about young people because as I work with people, I realize, you know, the, the habits have formed Ages ago, even we, you know, as kids, they formed habits and mindset around money. Um, so obviously, the the if we start teaching young people what to do with their money, you know, we can eradicate some of the problems, especially around debt. Um, as you know, as people get older, so definitely, the younger you start the better it is, obviously. I actually read an article this morning about a woman, a South African lady, who decided at the age of 27 that she wants to achieve financial freedom. And by mm-hmm. that, it means that she never, you know, she builds enough assets and um, you know, investments so that she is covered for the rest of her life. She never has to work again. It took us 15 years. She achieved it at the age of 42. And now she spends her time traveling and volunteering and actually helping communities around her. So, you know, and that's a, I think that's a big impact on, you know, that's a big aha moment that if we look after our own money and create, you know, the financial freedom for ourselves, the ripple effect will be um, to the communities and the people around us. So mm. to come back to your question around um, what rules to follow, the, the first one is to start saving from your first salary. And mm. if if that was 20 years ago, start saving today. Um, the act of saving, the act of keeping some of your money, you know, that pay yourself first keeping some of your money to provide for your future. It's, it's a form of self-love. It's a form of self-care. And I usually say to people, you know, you might sit there and think, I can't save. I can't, I, you know, I possibly, it's impossible. I don't get to the end of the month. It's not about the, initially when you start, it's not about the amount. amount. Uh, yeah, it's, it's all about the act of saving. So, you know, I would normally say to people, can you save 100 rand this month? And then they say, yes, I think I can. And then we up it a little bit. And I'm like, can you save 500? So mm-hmm. it's, it's the act of saving and keeping some of that money and not just let it go, you know, come in and out. And sometimes it's necessary to look at actual, actual expenses, whether you've set your life up, up to be a little bit more and beyond what you actually earn and can afford. So we live in a very debt-based society. Um, yes. Debt is rampant. Um, and it's almost, and I'm going to say this, it's almost like the banks encourage us to, oh, to get into debt. Because that's where they make their money. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where they make their money. They make their money off interest. Um, yeah. Primarily, primarily, I mean, they make it off different places, but one of the primary places that they make money is off interest. Um, yes. So that also links into the whole question of consumerism, of mm-hmm. people wanting to have things, marketing, you need to have this, you know, the car, the house, the, it doesn't matter what um, income strata you're in. It's all about this aspirational living that is touted through television, through marketing, marketing campaigns. Yes, we all know that they're all businesses and their businesses, you know, most of them, um, their philosophy is there to be to make profits. We know that businesses do need to make profits to be sustainable. Um, um, you're coming in with a counter argument going saving. Um, you haven't mentioned the word debt once. Is there such a thing as healthy debt? And if so, what is it? Uh, yes, yes. So um, just on that point where you said I started with saving. It actually starts with saving because if if someone started saving before they got debt, they most probably won't need debt um, mm. to cover to cover whatever that is. So I actually also say to people who are in debt, start saving alongside paying that off that debt, even if it's a little bit. 
because as you, you know, if, if you keep on paying the debt and don't have any emergency savings, you have to use debt again. Um, so yeah, saving comes before debt. But yes, debt is so normal. You know, it's, it's completely um, normal for people to say, I've got a credit card or to have loan from the bank. We've, we've, society has made it so normal that, that, um, you know, that it, it has become the problem that it is. And, you know, it's almost like you've won a prize or it's like a well done when the bank calls and says, hey, you've qualified for a credit card of up to 100000 And immediately we're like, oh, then I can, you know, do the kitchen, I can buy this, I can do this. And the bank says, you know, I qualify, so obviously I can afford it. But just because the bank says, hey, hey you've qualified, doesn't mean you can actually afford it. Um, so, yes, so debt is obviously, you know, can hold you back. And really, you know, for me, I fell into that trap, even though I was, uh, you know, very successful accountant, you know, four years ago, I fell into the debt trap. And I actually, you know, by the time, my, I repaid all my um, debt payments. Um, I had hardly anything left to live off in the month, and I had to go back into the cycle again. Um, and it was hugely embarrassing for me. Um, but I had to make a commitment to get out of that debt, no, regardless of what. I had to find a way <coughs> to get out of that debt and I used a variety of things and strategies to, to help me get out of it, uh, out of that debt. Okay. And one of them actually was to go 200 days without buying anything new. So to address my consumerism mindset, I actually set out to, to go for almost seven months without buying any new item, like any material item. You know, that's not part of bills or necessary living costs. And that really um, transformed my mindset around just buying, buying, buying. So you talk about a, mo a money mindset, and I just want to kind of position this into two places. The one is choosing, and we'll come back to healthy debt just now. Um, the one is, it's the hashtag is choose to earn. So we, it's all around choice. And mm -hmm. what we're saying is saving versus debt are choices. The other one yes. that I want to focus on is, so there's two, two elements here, two questions. The other one is, as a responsible citizen, they link together. As a responsible mm -hmm. citizen, what are the kinds of choices, because we make good choices, we make bad choices. What are the kinds of choices as a responsible citizen I need to be making around earning money and resources? Yes. Okay. So there's a variety of things we can we can say. Yeah. Obviously, also, you know, one of them is how do you make your money? You know, choosing to earn is also actually what is your contribution? What value do you give um, in order to bring in that money? Um, so, for example, is it a you know is it working for a company that you know, has the same values as you are that do good in the world or are you misaligned with with what what the work is that you actually, you know, do or who you work for. So I think it's all that's a very important choice to make as to what contribution do you give in exchange for your money. Um, you know, and the argument can be that you could maybe potentially limit yourself, um, you know, if you're not in, in aligned with the values of what you actually do. Um, uh -huh. And then I think another one is that, you know, choosing to earn and also to set, you know, your worth, get, getting your worth, you know, getting the worth that you, that you actually give, to have that equal value exchange, that you respect yourself enough to charge your worth and to not undersell yourself and your skills or perhaps sometimes give your time away into such an effect that you are worse off. Um, so one of the things I teach, especially with people that are more on the spiritual side or the healing side or the giving side of what they do is that, you know, that you need to receive the value that you give. 
so that you can support yourself fully. Because in order to, in, whilst you're supporting yourself fully, you can do more. So it's, and a, I guess it's this, a, yeah, yes. Go for I it. guess this this whole thing around, and I mean, this would go for whether I'm asking for entry level. I mean, a salary as I'm going into an organisation, whether I'm asking for what I'm worth, um, and also being able to pitch my value of what I can add. Um, and it also goes to small businesses or businesses charging out for these services, again, regardless Absolutely. of where they're from. Um, yeah. is how to get your pricing right. I mean, that is, I know for me in my own business, that's been something that has kind of haunted me all the way through, is yes. I know what I'm worth. But but the fear that comes up around, um, are people going to see that? You know, it's not a case that I can, I can pitch the value, but it's, when you're selling something intangible, until people have experienced yeah. it, it's very difficult to actually see what the value is, albeit that you've got testimonies and all those kinds of things. So what I'm hearing you saying here one of the threads that has come through like a golden thread through all these conversations has been around the personal mastery aspect awareness of self all of these elements mm -hmm. and all um, when I say all it's not a small all it's a big all all I'm hearing you saying is, is we need to be applying the exact same principles and processes about self awareness self worth to the manner in which we deal with money and it just seems to be this thing that money when we talk about it as money, it seems to be the thing that trips us up all the time. We've got a, a really, um, we've got almost an inferiority complex about money. Yeah, I can most certainly agree with you. And especially, you know, I've been working with people um, around money for the last three years. And that's a common thread um, among everyone, uh, you know, that that uh, inferior, inferiority and not realizing mm -hmm. that, you know, self-care and money goes hand, hand in hand. And neglecting your money life, you know, touches every aspect of your life. It touches health, it touches relationships, um, you know, your, your children, what you do, your future. It, it touches every aspect. We, we cannot really ignore and <coughs> deny it. So how do we go about cultivating um, a healthy, I know you talk about money mindset, how do we go about cultivating a healthy mindset around um, things, you know, it's like you when you go to a, a party or a bride or something, you don't talk about money, you don't talk about sex, you don't talk oh. about religion and politics. Yes. Um, yes. You know, it's kind of, these are like the taboo subjects and money very often is a taboo subject as well. Um, how do we start to inculcate and, and create a consciousness of abundance and a consciousness of mindfulness around money that is not rooted in shame and fear and all these other elements? Yes, that's quite a big big topic to address. And obviously it's, it's a, a journey um, and not just a, 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 a quick fix. Um, I think the first step is to be aware of what, your problem really is, or what is holding you back when it comes to money? Um, is it, you know, could it be debt? Can you just focus on one aspect of, of what you would like to transform when it comes to, to money? Um, whether it's actually focusing on your earnings or getting out of debt, or perhaps a block around charging rights. So it's, it's having that awareness and say, okay, I'm going to take this one area and I'm going to uh, work on it and, and start changing that around. And that could be, you know, speaking to a, you know, confidant or a family member or a trusted person and, you know, brainstorming on the, with that regard, whether it's getting coaching and outside help, whether it's starting, you know, to Google and get information or books perhaps on the topic. Start because when you start asking the questions and you actually focus on, okay, I want to focus on this one thing and, and get that right, then, you know, the, the answers will come to you. Um, and, and yeah, so it's awareness rather than avoidance, that head in the sand, I'm going to ignore the problem or I'm going to ignore that that um, issue that's holding me back. Okay. But um, it, in, in yeah. terms of one, yeah, two, there's, you know, what, what I always say, if you can start with two things, 
around money. One practical, one mindset. The first one for mindset is your language when it comes to money. I really work around what do you say, what do you speak, what you know is really what you attract. So we so often use scarcity scarcity words when it comes to money. You know, you say that, you know, at the, at the bribe, we won't discuss debt and all of that, but we so easily say, oh, I don't have money to, to do this, or I can't afford that, this, or oh, that's so expensive. You know, I still catch myself sometimes saying it, and then I have to stop myself. So start noticing the words you use around money. Are you speaking out of scarcity and using words of scarcity, and can you start shifting that to using words that's open to abundance or of abundance? Um, because it's, you know that whole mindset of abundance attracts abundance, and you notice more abundance. So, for example, I have a few examples. Instead of saying I can't afford something. Um, to say my money has other priorities right now. So, for mm. example, you don't, you're not buying. You, you, instead of saying I can't afford to buy that piece of Chloe clothing, say my money has other priorities right now. And you know, it could be to buy a bowl or to buy food. But you know, that's an empowering statement because you have yeah. choice. You're choosing to be responsible and use your money where it's really needed, rather than something that can wait to for later or isn't actually needed at all. Um, so that's you know, one of my... It's interesting thing, yeah, there's a very interesting thing yeah. that you're talking about and it's kind of flashing in my head right now is, is that when we go back to a little bit about debt is based on scarcity, we know this. Um, yes. It's about not enough. But the thing around debt is, is that we are we are negatively leveraging our future. Um, oh, absolutely. Because we're living beyond our, we, we're living beyond yep. our means. And I mean, I've had cycles in my life, and in fact, I'm still in one, where mm-hmm. that's exactly what the truth of it is. Um, is um, And it also comes from this, this this erroneous belief that there's not enough in the world. Um, yeah. and, it's, and it also comes from that space of it, you know, that holding on its mind. I don't want to give away, and I don't want to be generous, and all of those things. Um and then you get all these messages, you know, I've got to put the oxygen mask on my face first. And all these yes. misconceptions and erroneous beliefs that are ingrained in us from little. Um, yep. And it's across the scale again. It's not just something that is the domain of people who are earning. It can be as prevalent in an area that, like Riverley as it can be in an area where, um, you know, like Lone Hill in, in Johannesburg where, a lot oh, of people absolutely! Living way beyond the means. Absolutely, I've seen some shock, shock horror stories <laughs> yeah. that you wouldn't believe from people that no one would think. You know, the the yeah. amount of debt they've accumulated is unreal. Mm. So yeah. it's it's really a consciousness that needs to be shifting, um, and it's it's almost a case of um, a complete turnaround and shift around. Um, in terms of how we view and how we deal with money uh, as an energy. Well, absolutely. Fire. And that's the thing. It is It is an energy. It's mm. an absolute energy like everything around you. Um, and, and uh, you know, as we know, you know, with the whole, you know, law of attraction, when you, you you're in charge of the energy that you attract, it starts mm. with you. So starting to shift and working on that inner um, beliefs around money um, can can really radically change your your reality. Mm. Well, so. Yes, Angela. Mm-hmm. Mm. I mean, from you, questions from you. <laughs> All right. I, I mean, uh, um, we, we we are in a, in, in a space where um, financial literacy um, is really missing in this space, and. Um, it seems like uh, we talk about uh, how to spend, how to spend wisely. Uh, right now, we're almost getting into December, month of November, December. Mm. Uh, and um, already people have spent their December uh, salaries before mm-hmm. even get to December. You know, by mm-hmm. the time you get to December, you've got nothing. You start borrowing, you know. So how do we um, educate people? on how best to serve and how best do we uh, make this financial literacy sexy? <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I wish that instead of making debt normal and, mm-hmm. and such a society okayness, which is which is really it shouldn't be, mm-hmm. we make fin- financial freedom attractive mm-hmm. and actually make people believe that they can achieve it. I mean, for a long time, I I didn't believe. I'm able to create financial freedom. Mm -hmm. It sounded so impossible and I didn't even know where to, where to start. You know, it took me a lot of digging as to where to start and, and it shouldn't be so unavailable. Mm -hmm. You know, that information shouldn't feel so out of one's reach. So, I mean, what if we taught a subject of financial freedom in schools and universities? Mm -hmm. You know, and really sat down with each and every student and teach them how to create that from a very young age. Mm. How many industries were that closed with that closed down? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but imagine the, the well being it will create. Mm. <laughs> you know, the the thing is, the one thing I always say is if only I had a choice, you know, uh, if only I could make my own educated choice. If I would taught what to do with money and how to create wealth and how to have a great mindset around money. You know, when I was young, I could still have made the choice to go off the path and spend my money and go into debt and and all that. But at least I knew that I had a better choice. So, you know, at least if we give people choice and not just the 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 road that everyone's blindly following uh, around, you know, not creating that wealth for themselves. Mm-hmm. That, that brings um, me to an interesting conversation when you talk about creating wealth and this whole question of blockchain and cryptocurrencies and all of these things where many, many people are making a lot of money in the shift into cryptocurrencies um, and um, the way that the world is changing. Um, you know, there's there's fours and against and then mm. all sorts of things. But it's, mm. it's a case of, again, we are in the 21st century and what is yes. 21st century relevant? Yes, absolutely. I mean, money is as old as, you know, in the exchange of energy, you know, before money, it's it's been around for how long? But money has evolved, you know, it became digital. And, yeah, I do think we will be moving into cryptocurrency, I do think that's going to be a very real factor. It's still very volatile, um, but, the, you know, the form in which money comes will change over time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what you've given, so I don't mean to interrupt you, but I think you've really yes. given, you've demystified what things like blockchain, you know, all these technical terms, and very simply, it's money that's gone digital, and that's just such an easy way to start to get our heads around um, all these new ideas and new ways in which we deal with the energy of money. Yes, absolutely. So it's it's just a different form, mm. um, but the the core of it's still the same. You're exchanging something for something. Yeah. yeah. Well, sir, any other questions or comments? No, that's uh, that's all for me for for today. Um, yes. Hi, Monita. We, um, I know that you do um, quite a bit of work in terms of money coaching. Um, yes. Have you got a website or anything that people can go and have a look at? Yes. So it's um, mindfulmoneycoach.co.za. Mindfulmoneycoach.co.za. Mindful okay. Mm-hmm. And then um, I also have social media platforms under my name, Marnita Oppenman, Mindful Money Coach. Mm, awesome. Okay. Thank and you. I'll also come up if you just Google Mindful Money Coach. <laughs> so, yes, I work with individuals. I work with couples. And then I also do, um, uh, like, workplace uh, workshops. Okay. Beautiful. Right. Very, very cool indeed. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Thank you for your words of wisdom. You're welcome. Thank um, you so much, Riley. Your big message is out there is save, save, and save. And you can now get back to my parents' <laughs> era and growing up. Um, and it wasn't that long ago. I mean, we're talking 30, 40 years ago, where yeah. it was a much, much more of a savings mindset then than there is Absolutely. Now. Um, Absolutely. It really didn't. It's and radically my changed. Mentor was, you know, my father's mentor was, if you don't have the money, you don't get it. Um, yeah. You know, in, in one generation, it's changed so radically. 
Yes, and like you said, uh, it's a consumerism era, like you mentioned yeah. mentioned yeah. earlier. Yeah. So thank you so so much for your time, Wildfire. Thank you again. All right, so we'll thank you. Tomorrow thank you. All right, cheers. Goodbye. You're your online radio, the new online radio that makes you happy. Uh, sorry. <laughs>